We've got one step equations today, so we're going to talk about just the basics of solving equations that require only one step with them. So the first thing we need to go through is talk about some of the properties of math. So our properties are, um, first, of, first off, associative property. So the associative property says that The parentheses are moved around the parentheses are moved around, but the answer is the same. Parentheses are moved around, but the answer is the same. Associated property can be used for addition and for multiplication. So I'll put add and mult because those are the two um, operations that I can use the associated property with. There's an example. No matter how I work out this problem, 14 is going to equal 14, right? And it also works for multiplying. You just put your parentheses around different numbers, but you get the same answer. Associated property. Moving on to commutative property. I like to remind students that commutative is just like communication, back and forth, back and forth. So I'm going to switch the order of my numbers. but the answer is still the same. So you're switching the order of the numbers. Commutative property can work with addition and with multiplication. The order doesn't change the answer. The example that I gave, I'm going to get that 12 equals 12. Works with multiplying too. I could do that 6 times 4 equals 4 times 6. Switch the order, but I still get the same answer. 24 equals 24. Add an inverse. Next property means that a number and its opposite equals zero. And I can write it abbreviated, and you can too if you want. A number and its opposite equals zero. A number and its opposite equals zero. Um, this only works with addition. That's why it's called additive inverse, because add. So there's my example. Positive 5 plus negative 5, they cancel each other out. They're like zero pairs. <laughs> Distributive property. You guys know this. We've been doing it for two days. The number on the outside gets multiplied by both numbers on the inside. Go ahead and write down your definition because you've been working through it, you know in your own words what you would say. Distributive property. And there's an example, and you know, we are used to this, but it's the same thing. Four times six plus four times three. 
24 plus 12. Last one is the identity property of addition. So identity property of addition is uh, works with addition and works with multiplication. So with addition, it's a number added to zero. So any number plus zero equals itself. A number added to zero or a number plus zero equals itself. The same thing if I want to talk about multiplication. But a number that's multiplied by 1 equals itself. So identity property is very much like, you know, identity like yourself. So let's say I I said Mrs. Grant plus zero equals Mrs. Grant. Mrs. Grant times one equals Mrs. Grant. Okay, so it works for addition and it works for multiplication. All right, a little recap. That's the chart that you have down below. The <coughs> properties of equality mean whatever you do to one side, you do to the other side. If I'm going to add 5 to the left side, I'm going to add 5 to the right. If I'm going to divide 17 on the right side, I'm going to divide 17 on the left side. Whatever you do to one side, you do to the other. Equality, equal sign. One side, the other side. It needs to be equal. No matter what you do to one, you do to the other. We're going to use properties of equality to help us solve. So we've got these one-step equations. All right. So um, I have an equation, and my ultimate goal always is to solve for the variable. So this is what I want at the end. X equals something, right? Well, right now, I have a 9 in the way. And that 9 is on the side that, well, it... I want it to go away. I want the 9 to, to become nothing, to be gone. I want the 9 to become a 0. So I've got the additive inverse property that I can do to get a 0. So how do I make a 9 into a 0? Help me. Subtract by 9. Subtract by 9. So I got 9 here. And then I got 9 minus 9 is 0. So if you want, you can put like x plus 0. And then I do whatever, oh, subtraction property of equality, here it is. Whatever I do to the left, I do to the right. So that means that I got, what? Negative 14 and negative 9 together. Negative 23. Negative 23. Okay? Negative 23. A way to, to check that you get perfect answers on every single one of these that you get 100% is to check your answer. So here's negative 23. I can plug it back in for x and say negative 23 plus 9 equals negative 14, yes or no? Is that a, a correct math problem or incorrect? Correct. Yes, it's right, which means that I'm going to get the problem right. Checking your answers is not something that I'm going to like make you do every single problem. But if you're the kind of person that wants to get answers right, it's a great thing to do, and it checks to make sure that you're on the right track. All right, number two. I want x to be alone at the bottom. Right now, it's not. There's a minus 3 right after it. And I want it to say, well, I want the minus 3 to be gone. I want the minus 3 to become a 0. How do I make that minus 3 become a 0? Add 3. Good. So let's do that. Plus 3, plus 3. So I'm going to add 3, and I got a special word that I use. BS. 
BS means both sides. So all those times that you've been hearing people say, oh, that's BS. They're talking about math. Both sides. I know, right? Isn't it great math all the time? Everyone talks about math. So, add three, BS. All right. That means that negative three and positive three make zero. 11 plus three makes 14. Well, I don't need to write x plus zero. I can just write x equals, and it equals 14. Okay, a little quick absolute value lesson. Absolute value means how far away from zero is a number. What's the value of that number in relation to zero? So you'll see things like this. Absolute value is straight lines, and then there's a number inside. So I've got this, ab this says absolute value of negative three. So look at the number line. How far away from zero is negative three? How many spaces do you count? Three. The answers to absolute value problems are positive because it's three positive spaces. We don't have negative spaces, so we just say three spaces. I could also have a problem like, what's the absolute value of 17? Which means how far away from zero is 17? How many spaces? 17, 17 away. Again, it's a positive 17. The time that you would have a negative absolute value answer would be a ne um, negative absolute value of negative 11. So now make sure that your lines are super long so that your 11 is distinguishable. Okay. First thing you do is you cover up this negative sign. Gone, 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 gone. And you just focus on what's inside. It's like order of operations, you know? What's the absolute value of negative 11? So this is gone. Forget it's there. Ah. Okay. And now it's like, okay, well, I got 11. But oh, there was this negative sign out front. Are you guys like enthralled? Woo. Like a little comment. So you put the negative in your answer because it was in front of the absolute value lines. Okay. So that's absolute value. So then if I'm going to do this problem number three, I need to get that negative three out of the absolute value symbols. So what can I write instead of absolute value of negative three? Three. So rewrite your problem as just a three. The plus sign stays and then the negative x equals 13. Okay. Um, my ultimate goal, right? Get x alone. I first, I need to get rid of that 3. So how do I get rid of a positive 3, a plus 3? Subtract 3. Subtract 3. That means my additive inverse, right? So subtract 3. BS. Okay. That's 0. Negative x equals 13 minus 3. 10. 10. But now there's this negative x there. Not good. So, you know, uh, one thing that you can use in the future is you can just say, oh, there's a negative in front of the x. Just move it over to the other side. But the mathematical way would be for me to have it be negative 1x. And then what do I do? Divide. More information, please. No, I don't want to divide 1x by both sides. <laughs> divide negative 1 on both sides. Let me do it in like a different color. Divide by negative 1, divide by negative 1. So now on the left, I've got a negative 1 divided by negative 1, which just comes out to be a 1. And on the right, I have 10 divided by negative 1. What's that answer? Negative 10. Negative 10. Good. Okay, so, all right, we're going to use our foldables to help us with four, five, and six. So on number four, I've got the difference. What word is difference? Subtract. Subtract. The difference of a number and three. 
So how would I write the difference of a number and 3? x minus 3. Is. What was is? Equals. Equals 7. Awesome. Don't even solve it. Just write it out. Second one. The sum of a number and 25. Sum. Sum, sum, sum. What's sum? Plus. So how, give me, a, give me a vari, another variable. A. A plus 25 is equal sign. 38. Cool. Next, on number six, less than. The word less than is opposite of what you think. Here's what it is. It's eight less than a number. So I wrote G minus eight. Here's why. Eight less than. So I've got eight, and then it's going to be less than this number. So I'm actually taking eight away from G. Eight less than the number. Well, the number is G, and I want to do eight less than it. I'm taking eight away from it. So watch out for less than, and then also the word more than is another one that's backwards. Okay, let's finish number six. Is equal sign, right? 20. Oh, it does. Okay, sorry. We can figure it out. All right. Moving on. Um, I'm going to skip the triangle problem just due to time purposes. Let's go to the next. Number eight. Okay. 3x equals 15. So we haven't talked about these type before, but it says 3 times x. 3x. Well, I want x alone, don't I? So I need to get rid of the 3. How do I get rid of the 3? Divide. Divide. I do the... Inverse operation, divide by 3, BS. Okay, 3 over 3 becomes 1x, which, you know, I just need to write x. I don't need to write 1x. And then what's 15 divided by 3? 5. 5. And then you could always check it. And I could say, is 3 times 5? 15? Yeah, or yay, nay? Yay. Yay. Yay! yay. yay. All right. Here, ooh. X is on the denominator. Kind of weird. Not something we're used to. So here's how you do it. The best way that I can share with you is to put 3 over 1. Okay? And then this now becomes a proportion. 9 over X equals 3 over 1. So I'm going to cross multiply. That's how you solve proportions. I cross multiply by using like a butterfly. So I circle the x and the 3 because they're diagonals. I circle the 1 and the 9 because they're diagonals. And then I make little butterfly antennas. So you need to multiply the things that are, that are in the same circle or oval. 3 times x, 3x. 9 times 1, nine. 9. The equal sign just drops straight down. How do I get x alone? What happens to this 3? Divide by 3 both sides. It's just like the last one, right? 1x equals, how many times is 3 going to 9? Three. Is 3 times 3 equal to 9? I would have to check, you know, make sure I get 100%. Perfect. All right, same process. Do, and I want to make it a little bit bigger. Oh, that purple thing is stuck there. Sorry. Four over one. So it's now it's x times four. 1 times negative 12, the negative sign goes with the numerator. Negative signs go with the numerator. Negative numerator. So I got 4 times x. And I got negative 12 times 1. Negative 
My ultimate goal is to get X alone, but right now it is multiplied by a four. Darn it. How do I get rid of that four? Do the opposite of multiply. I divide both sides by four. Negative 12 divided by four negative three. is negative three. And negative 12 divided by negative three <gasps> does equal a positive four. So I am good. 7R equals 50, negative 56. Um, seven, it's gotta go. It's seven times R. I wanna make it just a one R. Oh, one R. So, how do I get rid of the seven? Divide by seven, both sides. Because seven over seven is a one. And then the R is alone. Perfect. Negative 56 divided by seven. Negative eight. Seven goes into negative 56, negative eight times. Seven times negative eight. Let's check it. Seven times negative eight. Negative 56, yeah. All right. Last example on your paper. We haven't seen a fraction before. But now I've got this 1 fourth. It's multiplied by x. I still want x alone. How do I get rid of a 1 fourth? Does anyone remember this from the past? Multiply by the reciprocal. Multiply by the reciprocal. Because the only way for me to get a 1x is to get rid of the 1 fourth by doing this. 4 over 1 times 1 fourth cancels everything, and I get 1s all throughout. Whatever I do to the left side, multiplication property of equality, I do to the right side. What is negative 8 times 4 over 1? Negative 32. Negative 32. I don't need the 1 in front, so I can just do that x equals negative 32. All right, let's keep going. Last thing I want to talk to you about, a little recap. Additions, I'm sorry, equations with addition signs, subtract. Equations with subtraction signs, add. Equations with multiplication, you divide. And equations with division, you multiply. Be careful if you get like a y minus negative 4, because then you have to make it y plus 4, and now you're dealing with an addition equation. Or this 1 half h is this. So I can't divide by 1 half. I have to multiply by the reciprocal. Things like that you've got to be real careful with. All right, let's start on the classwork.